Hi friends, this is a practice that merges vinyasa with yin, the idea to just release so that you can in turn harness the energy that you need for the upcoming winter months. All you'll need is a comfortable place to practice, any props that you love to use and incorporate, and of course yourself. When you're ready, we'll get started. practice, let's start in child's pose. So you can go ahead and take layers off to begin, anticipating you're going to warm up or feel free to leave them on. So as the weather's colder now, maybe you need those layers and then just take them off as you need. Um, and then that can be a metaphor for life as well. Like you can have the power of and. So begin to stretch the arms forward, let the forehead drop down. Release the third eye into the mat and perhaps close the eyes softly. A couple breaths here to simply arrive. What do you notice within the body, within the mind? What's your energy body in this moment? Are you Tired or anxious, happy, sad, content, nourished? What do you exude in this moment? And it doesn't have to be labeled as positive or negative. It simply is. I am. I'm fill in the blank. And then as humans, just... Understanding that moment to moment transitions are natural. So you might feel super happy in one moment, super content in the next, but then really empty in another. And that's okay. You can also hold more than one emotion at the same time. Be happy and sad. Once you check in with the emotional body and the energetic body, just start to feel into the physical body. And start to notice where you're carrying any heaviness. And then every exhale is an opportunity to just let that weight sink into the floor and let Mother Earth take hold. Last few rounds of breath here. Noticing the toenails pressing down, tops of the feet, tops of the shins. Knees are slightly apart or together, yogi choice, whatever feels good. If they were together and you want to slide them apart for the last few breaths, you can do that. If they're apart, maybe you want to put them together. Change it up just to explore different sensations. And it's also okay to surrender within one posture as well. So starting out slightly yin-ish, so just the softer side of yoga, a longer hold just to take inventory before we begin a movement, a heated vinyasa practice. Good. You're going to press the palms down, begin to lift up, lift to the hips, bring the knees in, open the feet wide, let the palms press down. Take a few cat-cow breaths here, so drop the belly. Inhale as you glance up, stretch through the throat. Exhale and round, push the floor away with the shins and the tops of the feet and the palms of the hands, so you feel that mid-back as though it can kind of kiss the ceiling. And then again, drop the belly, inhale, look up. And we're lingering on the ends of each of those breaths. So you just feel what you feel, stretch what you need to stretch. And so you're kind of tapping into all the muscles of the back body, and the front body. A 
good. This next exhale, push the hips back into the heels. Come into child's pose, Balasana. The forehead can rest down. Get to the bottom of the exhale. Feel the belly button lift up. So you're pushing all of the air out. No breath left. And then new breath. Inhale, floats you up. Drops the belly. Stretch, arch. Exhale, four presses away, shift the hips back into the heels, and you just find some really subtle, soft movements with the breath. So moving at your own length of your inhale, your own length of your exhale. And again, nothing too intense. You just find a nice rhythm, ease as you move with that in breath and out breath. Let's go one more time on your inhale. One more time on your out breath. Next breath in. Lift up, curl the toes, press back, down dog. And maybe this down dog is, if it's the first down dog of your day, maybe you want to widen the stance. And paddle it out. You can bicycle the legs, right knee bends, left heel presses down. Left knee bends, right heel presses down. You can be relatively loose in the hamstrings. You can keep the legs together. Or hip distance or toes touching, whatever that feels good to you there. If it's morning time, I tend to start out a little wider just because I have to awaken into different sensations. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. It's kind of lame, but it's true. <laughs> Bring the big toes together and then bicycle out the legs once again. And just find a full range of motion, whatever you can extend with the body that feels comfortable to you. If a down dog is a challenge, you can always do this on all fours. And it's just extending one leg back with the toe curled under. Just a stretch to the calf or the back of the legs. And good, last couple breaths. Walk the feet forward, come into a forward fold. Open the feet, the width of the hips, maybe a little wider. And grab for opposite elbows, drape the body out and over, shake out the head and the neck. And I'm loving my, just my cover right now. <laughs> it's like super soft, really nice. If you're um, looking for some cashmere, I could recommend Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> really good price, super soft, good investment. Check out the head and the neck. And then go ahead and release the arms. I like to press the fingers, give a little like stretch out. And then bend the knees so much that you can rest the belly onto the tops of the thighs. So if it's really intense into the hamstrings, you don't have to think in your mind, I have to straighten the legs, I have to straighten the legs. You really don't. You just want to create some sort of sensation, but a stabilizing sensation. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. Maybe a walk to the right side, a walk to the left side. And remind yourself, it's not about the perfect pose, it's just feeling some reliefs. Slowly roll yourself up to standing. Feel the earth and the body pressing down into the feet as you roll up. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Hands to the heart. So if you're in layers and maybe you want to take something off, I'm going to take this guy off because we are going to do a bit of a flow. Circle the arms. Inhale. Stretch out. Press the palms together, interlace the fingers, press the palm side of the hands up towards the ceiling. Drop the shoulders down and then just feel that stretch through the forearms, stretch into the palms, the fingertips. Draw the belly back, tuck the tailbone under. So if you tend to sway back, tuck under. And then we'll take a stretch over on the exhale to the right side. Inhale to center, over to the left side as you exhale. Back to center, release the hands, bring the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, press the knuckles away. So this might be it, and you might just feel the shoulder blades hug back and the palms squeeze together, and that gives you plenty in the deltoids, the fronts of the shoulders, or you can begin to straighten the arms. 
And just a couple breaths. What feels good for you here? I like to have a little bit of movement. Into the neck, maybe. If it's towards the end of the week when you're watching this video, you might be holding up a lot more tension than the start of a week. So just explore what releases feel nice for you. Good. And then go ahead and release. Shake it out. Circle the arms. Inhale. This time, interlace one finger over the funny way. Press the palms up towards the ceiling. Take a big in-breath. Exhale as you go over towards the right. Press into that left foot. Stretch through towards the left pinky so you get a really nice side body opening. And then so much so, if you press into the left, you could lift that right foot. <laughs> Inhale back to center. Exhale, take it over towards the left side. The body has a tendency to want to swivel, so you want to keep it squared. So hips squared forward, shoulders squared forward. You feel it really isolating the stretch into that right side body. Press into the outer edge of that right foot, really anchor it down, and then maybe that left foot lifts up. And then lower it down, inhale back to center, release the hands, interlace the hands behind the back, one finger over. Squeeze the palms, and then maybe you're good here. Sometimes I rest the thumb onto my lower back just to kind of dial into the shoulders. Engage the quads, soften the bend of the knees, and then maybe the arms straighten. Draw up the shoulders as far away from the earlobes as you can. Hug the palms together and then just explore what sensations deep into the connective tissues of those shoulders. So the tissue around the bones and the joints. Felix is desperate to get out, so <laughs> that's his meow. Go ahead and release, shake it out, circle the arms, inhale, big breath. Exhale, glide it out, glide it over forward, fold forehead towards the knees. Inhale, halfway lengthens you, and I would suggest hands to the thighs so you can get full length through the spine. Feel the chest reaching forward, crown of the head reaching forward. And then exhale, go ahead and step that right foot way, way back. Nice lunge, keep the right knee lifted, reach the heart forward. So you get a nice long stride and a long stretch through the upper body. Engage that right leg, press the right heel back. Good, and then we'll just take a little length through that left leg. So straighten through the left leg, maybe that right heel reaches back. Press down into that left toe. If you need blocks underneath the hands, you can grab blocks here. Good, and then breathe in the knee, stretch the heart forward, engage the right leg, big breath in. Exhale, soft, softly straighten that left leg. Left big toe pressing down, so you feel the inner arch of the foot really anchoring in towards the earth. Sometimes you can keep the right heel lifted or if you wanna press it down for a little bit more intensity. And then inhale, heart forward. If you like to look up, look up. Feel the stretch through the right quad, uh, quad and right psoas. And then one last out breath. Go times a charm. Hug the outer hips together. Shake up the head. Yes and no. Good. Rebend. Press the palms. Step the left foot to meet the right foot. Come into a plank. Really root down. Engage the legs. Engage the quads, push the floor away, draw the shoulders wide. Linger here maybe a second or two longer than you would want. Keep the hips in line with the shoulders, tuck the tailbone. Just feel yourself getting stronger. And that can be scary. <laughs> you can panic sometimes as you're getting stronger. Good, and then go ahead and lower the knees, lower the chest, lower the chin, lower the belly. Reach the arms alongside the body, palms down. Nice and long through the crown of the head and then press the top of the right foot, top of the left foot. Soften the glutes on your in-breath. Lift the torso, engage the back body. Lift up as high, high, high as you can. And then exhale, lower down. Good, again, inhale, lifting up. Maybe the arms lift up. And you can imagine you have a block between the hands you're pressing. Lift up a little higher, a little higher, 
and then exhale lower down. It's not easy by any means. So if it's challenging, you're in there. That's what you want. Inhale, lift up, press the palms as though you're holding an imaginary block. Go ahead and take the right leg lifted up. Right leg lowers down. Left leg lifts up, lift, lift, lift. Exhale as you lower down. Inhale, lift both legs up. Engage the back body, soften the glutes. Lift, lift, lift. Exhale, lower down. Palms press down at the lower ribs. Curl the toes. Inhale, into plank. Exhale, send it back, down dog. Any movements, organic movements that you need for your body here. Keep a soft bend to the knees and keep those sits bones lifting up towards the ceiling. A couple breaths, recenter. Close the eyes, relax the jaw. Feel a fire starting to ignite. And slowly step that left foot forward. Lunge here, heart forward and then propel forward with that right foot. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good, circle the arms. Inhale, reach up. Maybe a lean back. Lean to the right side. To the left. To the back. Full breath in and then exhale as you empty the lungs and fold forward. Inhale, halfway up. Maybe the hands find the shins now as you lengthen. Exhale, hands find the mat. Step the left foot way, way back. Stay in that lunge positioning. Engage the muscles of that left leg so you feel kind of that lift. Left heel pressing back, heart forward. If you need a couple blocks or books underneath the hands, feel free to do that. And then you just want to be mindful that the right knee is pointing forward over that second toe and you're keeping the right knee over the right ankle. So just a nice 90 degree angle. Inhale, lengthens you. Exhale, begin to softly straighten that right leg. So we're not pulling it back anxiously. We're just softly exploring some sensation here. Maybe that left heel presses down. Inhale, forward. Exhale as you straighten. Keep hugging the outer hips together, both hip points forward. Inhale, get all that length. Press the left heel back. You feel that left hip flexor. And then exhale, folding out and over. And again, inhale as you lengthen. Let the palms press. Step the right foot back to meet the left foot. Stay in plank for a moment or two here. Feel the belly lift. So plank pose is one of those poses where you fill every cell of your body. That can be frightening, <laughs> but you wanna feel it, feel it, feel everything. Don't be afraid of the feelings. If you feel something, it moves through you as opposed to just suppressing it down. Feel the feels. Create space for you to feel other feels. Good, slowly lower the knees, lower the chest, lower the chin. See, when you're coming out of it, it never seems that bad. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and press the palms along the lower floating ribs, tops of the feet press down. Inhale into a version of cobra. So elbows hug in, shoulders go wide. Pubic bone presses down, so you should feel that band in that mid back, the thoracic band, so the where the ribs meet the spine. And then exhale as you lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale. Last one, you can stay in cobra, or if you like up dog, you come to the tops of the feet, the palms of the hands. And you're pressing down in the tops of the feet, rolling the shoulders back so you feel stable. And then exhale. Your old friend down dog. And you find a few rounds of breath here. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. So it's not whiplash vinyasa, so sorry if you thought we'd be moving a lot quicker. <laughs> uh, it's not really my style. 
Um, but we are going to get into some flow. This is just the kind of build into it, get the muscles all warmed up, get the support you need in the physical body. And then, and then right foot's going to step forward. Keep that left leg nice and strong. Lunge here. Feel the heart reaching forward. And then when you're ready for that new breath, step with ease. Left foot to meet the right foot. Inhale, lengthens you halfway. Exhale, folds in. Inhale, rise to reach and to stand. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good. Bend the knees, sink the hips, fingertips gra uh, graze the floor here, and then inhale as you reach up. Utkatasana. Toes can lift up, heels can sink down, and then just sit way, way back. Let the pinkies roll in, thumbs roll out. So you get that intensity in the arms as well. It's like a good intensity, strengthening intensity. Exhale, fold it down and over. Inhale, halfway lengthens you. Exhale, right foot goes way, way back. Nice low lunge. Drop the right knee down. Uncurl the toe. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Lean back, look up. Press into the earth and then feel that extension as you reach. Breath here. Breath out. Step it back, high plank. Roll to the outer edge of the right foot. So you can find side plank or you can step that left foot. It's kind of a kickstand. And then left arm lifts up. So option to stay here or option just to take it into Vashasasana side plank. Lift the undercarriage of the body. Left arm as though it's going to touch the ceiling. And then left arm can go up and over. Breathe into the side body. Good. Left hand finds the mat. Take a pause in plank. Big breath in. Exhale. Roll to the outer edge of that left foot. And again, you can step that right foot forward. Anchor it down. Lift the hips. Right arm lifts up. Or you can step right foot on top of that left. Lift the hips. Make sure that right hip point stays on top of the left. Right hip moves forward, right arm up, and then maybe right arm over. For, forgive yourself of all things <laughs> this lifetime and maybe five lifetimes back. Good, right hand down. Forward, chaturanga. If you're chaturangering, <laughs> you know, it's with the knees down and modify. And then exhale, step it back. Down, down. Breath here. Breath out. Let's go ahead and step the left foot forward. So right foot stays back. Right knee down. So same side we just did. Inhale. Sweep the arms up. Reach back. Keep lifting out of that lower back. And then exhale. Frame the front foot. Transition, transition the right foot forward, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold, sink the hips, bend the knees, inhale, utkatasana, and then exhale, fold it out and over, inhale, lengthens you, step the left foot way, way back, keep the right foot forward, lower the left knee down, uncurl the toe, inhale, sweep up. Sole of the right foot rooting down, top of the left foot anchoring in. Inhale as you lift, breathe, pinkies and thumbs out. So you're always broadening that upper back. You want to think expansion. And then exhale, hands find the mat, step it back. Roll to the outer edge of that left foot, right arm reaches up, right arm reaches over. You can kickstand the foot if you want. You can keep the feet stacked, or maybe you begin to lift that top leg. Lift the hips. Reach that right arm all the way over. Good. The right hand finds the mat. Pause and plank. Roll to the outer edge of that left foot. Left arm lifts up. Kickstand the foot if you want. Keep the feet stacked if you want. Lift the leg if you want. There's no one way. Just a multitude of ways. And as long as you're exploring whatever positioning you're in, you've got it. Left hand down, toes together, 
Shift forward, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Couple breaths here. And savor the moment, feel the body. Right foot's gonna step forward, left foot back, lower the left knee down. You can keep the toe curled under. I did it on the second side of the other one, so I'll do it here. You can also uncurl it. Inhale. Any funny business on the knees? Adjust. And then exhale. Frame that front foot. Lift the left knee. Take inventory and then step the left foot forward on that breath. Inhale, lengthens you. Exhale, folds you in. Bend the knees, sink the hips. Utkatasana. Sit back, reach high. Self fold it out. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, prepare. Chaturanga, if you're chaturanga, <laughs> straight into down dog. If you're going straight into down dog, fill yourself out. Meeting down dog, right leg will lift, big inhale. And so step the right foot forward, left heel roots down, warrior one. Sink into it. Explore it for a moment, square the hips, square the shoulders. Inhale, straighten the right leg, glide it open, warrior two. So warrior two, I like to lengthen the stance. Peel that left hip back, right underside of that right hip kind of rolls under, and then you feel that engagement as the knee moves forward. Drop the left hand, flip the right, reverse. Straighten through the right leg on the reverse. Reach way, way back. Exhale, reach forward. Forward, forward, forward when you can't go any farther. Right hand down, left arm up, Trikonasana. Scoop that right sits bone back. So it's not a back bend in the back body, but you feel as though you can lean against the wall. And then left hand down, right hand down. Drop the left knee, sink the hips, inhale, sweep up. And then arms reach up. Feel the hips pressing down. Maybe that left foot presses down and you begin to lift that left knee. Not for everybody. Lower the left knee down. Square out over that front leg. Uncurl the toe. Step it forward. Inhale, lengthens you. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Utkatasana. You feel as though you're kind of squeezing a hundred dollar bill between your thighs. So you get that hugging in sensation. And then exhale, fold it down and over. Inhale, exhale, high plank, low plank or chaturanga. New breath, new move. Left leg to lift. Exhale, left foot forward. Outer edge of that right foot, pressing down. Square the hips. Check that that left toe is in line with your left knee. Left thigh parallel to the floor. And then once you're ready and set, arms draw up, warrior one. Relax the shoulders. Pinky is in, thumbs out. So you're stabilizing with your own strength, but you're also finding spaciousness. And then inhale, glide it open, warrior two, slightly longer stance, sink into it, feel that left thigh moving under, so that right knee opens out, back foot anchoring down, back thigh, back hip, peeling open. And drop the right hand, lift the left, reverse. And straighten through that left leg, reach way, way back. And exhale, left hand forward and down, 
right arm up. Chikonasana, triangle pose. Just noticing all your angles. Again, right hand down, left hand down. Come back to square it off, follow the right foot, and then lower the light, right knee down. Uncurl the toes to the top of the foot, roots down. Inhale as you reach up. Float it back. Modified Arjaniasana. Lunge. Good. Arms go back to neutral, fingertips reach high. Top of the foot presses down, and maybe that right knee lifts. Just for a few breaths here as you strengthen into that right psoas, right hip flexor. Lower the right knee down, sweep the arms around, curl the back toe under, lift the, the right knee, and then slide that right foot forward or step. Inhale, lengthens you out. Exhale, two folds in. And then heel toe the feet, just about hip width distance apart. Peace fingers and thumbs around the big toes. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, use the strength of the biceps and triceps to fold yourself inward so the forehead is towards the space between your shin bones. You can shake out the head and the neck here. And feel the sensations as you lift your sitting bones towards the ceiling. <sighs> Just enjoy that kind of reverse circulation. So your head is below your heart, technically an inversion. Sometimes it's good just to kind of shift our perspective, shift out of the storylines that we're living. And noticing the world from a different angle. And again, inhale, halfway. Exhale, release, shake out the hands. Grab for opposite elbows. We're just doing a nice little sway reset from side to side. And then we'll go for one more. So you can do peace fingers and thumbs around big toes. You can also slide palms up, toes towards the inner creases of the hands. And then you really press down. There's so many sensory points in the feet and in the hands, so you can kind of like do a little piano playing with the toes and awaken some sensations internally. Shake out the head and the neck. Inhale, lengthens you, so hips over the heels. And then exhale as you draw inwards. And play around with what you're feeling in the back of the legs. Always stay soft in the knees though, so you don't want to pull any T intensity in and around the backs of the knees and those tissue. You want to keep them supple, but focus instead on the sits bones lifting and the hamstring stretching. Okay. When you had enough of that, or at least <laughs> shake it out. Inhale, lengthens you halfway. So just kind of feel what you opened up in the back of the legs. Fold in, heel toe the feet the width of the mat, and then let the toes draw out, drop the seat down. Put the hands behind, soles of the feet together, knees open wide, and let's go a little bit farther away from the body. So butterfly the legs so the heels are more of a diamond shaped away from you. And then just do a little flutter of the legs. Lengthen up through the crown of the head, big breath in. Drop the shoulders as you exhale. And then exhale, fold and round. So you're folding and then rounding the back body. Palms can press down and forehead can just draw towards the heels and the inner arch and the chin towards the chest. And if for some reason this draws any unwanted intensity, use your prop. So if you have a pillow or a bolster or a blanket, you can elevate your seat. It just makes it a little bit more accessible. I like a challenge, so I'll sit on the floor and just linger here. So just noticing a challenge versus um, any unwanted intensity on your joints or something that doesn't feel comfortable or good in any way. Shake out the head and the neck. 
I'm just going to swim around in it for a moment. If you like to just find full stillness, find full stillness. And you're breathing into the muscles on either side of the spine. So yeah, you're getting a hip opener here, slight into the connective tissue of where the legs meet the torso, but you're also just breathing into the muscles on either side of the spine, just nourishing the spinal tissue. Full breaths in and full breaths out. And so with any forward fold, it's also really good for those internal organs and the tissue around the organs. Make sure you're not holding anything. So the vinyasa part of the practice, just moving the energy in and of our body and all of that energy from the year. And then you're just preparing for the cooler months. So letting go of what doesn't serve you, letting go of the, the thoughts that don't serve, and those thoughts kind of linger in the tissues of our body, so we're just kind of releasing those. Finding some freedom for the self. So inhale as you come up, and then we're going to take the legs wide. So this is the part where I do encourage some elevation in the hips. So if you find, so the pelvis is kind of like this apparatus. <laughs> um, if you tilt forward, so it's pretty easy. So you can see I can kind of, my body naturally tilts forward. Um, so that means these sort of folds are a, a lot easier on my body. But if you tend to be more open in the pelvis, the hinge of it leans you back. And you feel like no matter what you do, you feel like you're kind of rounding. Elevate the seat. So sit on a bolster, sit on a pillow, sit on a blanket, a block, whatever you have, a couple blankets. And you want to just feel that lift so the hips are above the ankles. And then you'll take a breath in and then exhale. Feel that slight tilt forward. So maybe this is it for your body. I want to have you flex your feet as we start. And I can actually adjust in a little bit more. So flex the feet as we start. Reach through the heels. Slight fold forward. Palms press down. Drop the shoulders. And then once you're you have arrived in this positioning, relax the feet. And then you just wanna explore. So maybe you wanna tip the torso slightly forward, forward, forward. Close your eyes, relax the shoulders. And then just come into your own edge for this posture, this positioning. Let's shift back slightly. Full edge. So you feel that pull into the inseams of the legs, able to fold forward, and then you relax the feet. So we engage in muscles by flexing, but the yin part of your practice is about the cooling of your bones, of your muscles. So you want to relax the, uh, relax any um, engagement. Yeah, and then just soften the eyes, relax the jaw. Use any props that you need. If you are close to the floor, do you like a block underneath the forehead? You can grab for that. If you like to just rest palms at the third eye. And you might notice I'll kind of bend a knee and adjust. I'm just settling in so that I can fully release any muscle energy, muscle engagement. As you relax the muscles, you're able to hone in on the inseams of the legs and the inner working. So where the legs and the femur bones of the legs connect into the torso. And you feel a gentle tug at the joints and the hips. And everything is just so wondrously interconnected. All of these Muscle fibers and tendons and ligaments and joints and cells and bones of our body. So many things that have its own function, but they have to work together in order for the whole system to work properly. This gratitude here for that unity within yourself. We take for granted every day, like how we take a um, sandwich or a soup and that nourishes the cells of our body, like that's pretty incredible. It's like it keeps itself in order. 
And then maybe you want to lift up, take inventory. Can I go deeper into this comfortably? Yeah, I'm going to try it. <laughs> I'll draw the hips forward a little bit and a little bit more. I flex the feet just to reach the heels long. And then I begin to press the palms down once again. I keep kind of like stilts. They just support the upper body. And then maybe a little bit more, a little bit more. And you find your sweet spot. And relax the toes and relax the feet. And you feel that sensation, let it draw you in. And those sensations are vibrations in your body. So those vibrations are kind of unsticking bits that are just kind of hugged in tight. So stress, anxiety, jealousy, you know, the evil eye, we all can carry it from time to time. Frustration, sadness, heartbreak anger and just using this moment to just use it, let those vibrations shake loose what doesn't serve your highest truth your highest self reworking the stories that you tell yourself that you need to tell yourself it's like living in your own truth is an okay place to live Good. Inhale, we're going to come up. Everybody's good. <laughs> we're going to take a little reach over to the right side and then walk it forward. So just a moment or two here. Square it out over the right leg. Mm -hmm. You're anchoring the right heel, right sits bone. You kind of forgot about the left leg for now. That's okay. And then we're going to open the body towards the front side. Right hand's going to go to the inseam of that right leg. Left hand can find your left hip. So you draw that left shoulder back, and then we'll slide that right hand down. You find your edge here. Left arm up and over. So that was the side body stretches that we did earlier. We're just going to kind of keep extending through them in this practice. And then you're folding on the right side. So that's your ascending colon. So just really heavy work into the belly right now. And you again practice just waking up those energy channels. And then if you want to bend that right elbow, bend to the left, and then just kind of breathe here. Full breath in, full breath out. Relax the feet. Sometimes I have to keep reminding myself that, and it's okay. Give yourself another few rounds of breath here. And maybe Reach it a little farther through the elbow of that left arm. And then maybe that left arm reaches more and more and more. If you want to grab the right hand and the left foot and just extend. If you can hold the foot, hold the foot. And good, bring that left hand down. Square the body out over that right leg once again. Maybe the hands walk forward. And check out the hand a little yes and a little no. Relax the toes of that right leg once again. But you still feel the right heel heavy, the back of the right leg heavy. And again, slowly walk it up. And then left side. So we'll start out squaring. Walk forward, and again, you're just kind of forgetting about the right leg, honing in on that left leg here. And then we're just going to kind of siphon the circulation to this left leg, really focusing in here. And then left hand to the inseam of that left leg, maybe towards the ankle. Right arm reaches up, reaches over, nice side body stretch. And find your own edge here. Keep opening the chest. Feel that stretch to the right intercostal muscles. So instead of a reach, 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 stretch, pull, you're just kind of exploring slowly. 
I'm taking little baby steps into it and then maybe that left elbow bends, right elbow bends. Uh, I like to prop up the neck, especially if you're sitting at desk or doing a lot of at home work or office work. You might get a lot of strain in the neck around the computer a lot. Let's give a little extra support the weight of the head. And breathe into the descending colon now. So just a nice flushing of the colon by way of your breath and that massage inward. Good, right arm can reach, left hand can go down. If you wanna hold the foot, you can hold the foot. Last few breaths. Good, inhale, slowly come up. Grab behind the knees, lean back a little bit. Even if you're on a cushion, that's okay. Bring the soles of the feet together. This time, bring the soles of the feet closer to the body. Hold around the arches of the feet. Let the toes kind of press in. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, you're going to use the elbows to press the knees wide. And then fold down. Check the head out a little left and right. And just a nice reset here. So the inseams of the legs and the inner groin is the kidney line so it's the back of the spine so it hits the rounding of the back body and it's just a nice reset for those organs that nourish you through um well through your life but through the colder months to kind of keep you healthy fight off the flu and other viruses just want to really harness what you need into those vital organs, so your kidneys, your liver, all the detox organs. Good. And then we'll slowly come up. You can bring the knees in together and then let's just extend the legs forward. Bring the big toes together to touch. You can adjust the flesh of your bum, sits bones down, flex the feet, inhale, reach out, soften to the knees. Maybe a really great idea for you here. And then exhale, reach it out over. Behind the neck, ooh, and I feel it. Even with bent knees, I feel plenty of sensation in the back of the legs. So don't feel obligated to, you know, perfectly fold the body on top of itself. That's not, you know, yoga. <laughs> and you know, there's lots of different looks of yoga. And if that doesn't work for your body, that's not yoga for you. Maybe someday. <laughs> Check out the head and the neck. Yes. Ooh, feel the sensations when you say say yes. <laughs> Not more sensations than when you say no. What do they say? It's never what you do that you regret. It's the things you don't do. It's not fully true, but I think for the most part, it probably is true. It's the what ifs that we wonder about. Life pa passes you by so quickly. So... I just want to encourage people to be yes people. Say yes when you tend to lean into the no's. It's like such a much more magical existence for you and your family and your friends and all those around you. Inhale, bring yourself up. And then we'll take it into Shavasana. So let the legs extend towards the upper corners of your mat. Fold yourself onto the earth, release any ponytail if you have it, if it's kind of blocking you in any sort of way. Take a moment or two just to kind of like shake things out, like you shake the feet, shake out the hands, roll the wrist, shake the arms, ah, and then release the arms alongside the body, relax the back of the head down, and soften the eyes, relax the space between the eyebrows. Relax the throat. And if you need to pick up more space than you anticipated, maybe your your energy, your aura has expanded. So give yourself permission to expand to your fullness. And just trusting your own energy pool. And Shavasana.
Okay, wonderful yogi. Welcome to stay here longer if you like. If you are ready to move on, you can wiggle the fingers and the toes. Bring that energy movement back into the body. Movement of the ribs, almost like a suit. Go ahead and draw one knee in and draw the other knee in. Circle the knees around. Awaken into the pelvic floor, the back body. A gentle roll to the right side, extending the right ear over the right bicep. Soften the knees in. Just feeling into the release that maybe you needed a reset ahead of the colder months. When you're ready, slowly transition into a comfortable seat. Bring the palms of your hands together. Let the thumbs rest into the sternum. Bow the chin to the chest. Take a moment here of gratitude for yourself. Gratitude for your practice, the heated movement, and then the cooling reflection on this day. 